To say that Stadia has failed to capture the attention and hearts and minds of gamers would be a gross understatement. This is a platform that's seen a thoroughly rough launch and things have not improved since. A lot of the PR surrounding Stadia has been largely negative or apprehensive. While it is cool tech, it isn't just enough for technology to be cool. It's something that has to fill some kind of void, something that consumers will want to desire, but there's just nothing about Stadia that makes it superior to just playing locally on dedicated hardware. And the core features that could give Stadia certain advantages over other platforms, while those features are not fully implemented, the core technology of streaming doesn't work consistently, the platform is missing a lot of games, it's missing a lot of features, it is just uh, a beta, an early access type of product released as if it were a final product. The end result is that there are a lot of players who are dropping out of Stadia, and this is particularly bad for multiplayer games that exist as part of Stadia's library of games, namely games like Destiny 2. So the following information was conveyed by news outlet Forbes. The headline sort of paints a clear picture of what's going on there. Destiny 2's Google Stadia population has dropped by more than half since launch. Now understand that Destiny 2 already had a pretty meager launch on Stadia because Stadia just didn't sell particularly well. Stadia as a whole doesn't have a strong player base and within that weak player base only a small percentage of those people are actually playing Destiny 2. So if we scroll down here, the article actually points out the active player base of Destiny 2 by platform. And you can see right here on November 26th, 2019, the numbers looked like this. On PC, 494,000 players were playing the game actively on PS4, that number was at 454,000. On Xbox, that number was at 331,000. And on Stadia, that number was at a pretty minuscule 19,400. Not insignificant, but certainly much smaller than other platforms out there, more established platforms. And then when we look at what these numbers look like now more recently on January 2nd, so a little over a month after Stadia's launch, you will see quite a drastic drop on Stadia's end, whereas other platforms, they dropped off a little bit, but are still maintaining a strong player base. So you can see right here, PC went from 494,000 active players to 437,000. PS4 went from 454,000 to 435,000. Xbox went from 331,000 to 313,000. And last but not least, we have Stadia numbers, which look pretty dire. Stadia went from an already meager 19,400 all the way down to 8,020 players. The editor for this article did the math already and it was pointed out right here, quote, Stadia's population has fallen by more than 50%, by 58.7% to be exact. So that's actually closer to a 60% drop off. Now it should be noted that this downwards trend is natural at this stage of Destiny 2's life cycle because the major expansion Shadowkeep launched some time back and now that people have explored that content and we are now in what Forbes described as less engaging Season of Dawn, we're seeing the player base drop off until Destiny 2 releases its next major expansion, at which point no doubt the player base will spike again and then drop off again. So seeing, you know, PC, PS4, and Xbox numbers drop a little, that's not a natural. What is a natural is seeing the Stadia player base drop off by over 50%, closer to 60%, which goes to suggest that Stadia's drop off in player base has less to do with the fact that Destiny 2 is kind of on a low key moment in terms of new content release and it has more to do with the platform itself. Now this Forbes article does go out of its way to speculate why this huge drop off might only be happening on Stadia. And one of the highlighted reasons is there's simply no reason for me to pick Stadia over PS4 or PC. Be that for reasons of performance, even if Stadia streaming is good, it's not perfect, or 
player population. Yeah, I mean, Destiny 2 flat out runs better and looks better on other platforms like Xbox, PS4, and PC. The streaming technology is not fully there yet, so even with good internet connection, you might get some stutters. Destiny 2 is still capped out at 1080, 60 FPS on Stadia, even when using Chromecast Ultra. There are plenty of compromises with playing Destiny 2 on Stadia currently. It is just plain and simply the inferior version of the game, and so players have no incentive incentive to stay with the Stadia version, and as the player base drops off, even people who do find convenience in Stadia's features and like to play Destiny 2 on that platform, they'll start seeing that matchmaking is a lot more difficult, so they might think, okay, it's better to play on other platforms if I want to play with other players. And Destiny 2 is a live service multiplayer looter shooter, that player base is super important, but when that starts to drop off and players sense that, that's only going to lead to more players leaving and this vicious cycle is going to continue until there are very few players left and it seems as though Stadia might be facing that. In fact, Forbes right here highlights how there's just a general lack of engagement from Stadia's Destiny 2 player base. This excerpt right here reads, Try finding a fire team for the exact raid you want to do at the exact time when only 400 total people have done raids on Stadia. Stadia over the course of an entire day. And then right here we have a screenshot that the Forbes article featured, highlighting additional details and statistics when it comes to how players are engaging with Destiny 2. So as of January 2nd, 8,000 people were playing overall, 7.2 thousand were engaging in PvE, and as far as specific activities go, 1.21 thousand players engaged in Crucible, 1.14 thousand engaged in Gambit, only 412 engaged in Raids, and 133 engaged in Events. Raids are obviously a big part of Destiny 2 and its looter-shooter gameplay loop. When only 400 people are engaging in that activity, which is such a small percentage of the few thousands who are playing this game on Stadia, that's just not tenable for a live service looter shooter like Destiny 2. The Forbes article also pointed out how, according to data, there are plenty of players who might have tried Destiny 2 and then just flat out left when they realized the game just wasn't all that engaging, noting how, quote, since launch, a disproportionate number of Stadia players have been in patrol mode, aka wandering around doing essentially nothing, so they weren't engaging in the game's core activities like missions, strikes, crucible, gambits, raids, or other actual activities. This could suggest that there were a lot of new players who were intimidated by Destiny 2 and just didn't know what to do in the game and signed off, or a lot of people tried Destiny 2 out just to see how well it performs going into patrol mode, and when they realized that the game just doesn't run quite as well and doesn't look quite as well on Stadia as it does on other platforms, they just bounced off and decided to play the game where... It just runs and plays better and looks better. And that's kind of what I did with Destiny 2. It is a game that comes free if you are a Stadia Pro user. And the way I engaged with Stadia was that I booted up Destiny 2, I went into a patrol, just kind of wandered in a planet and tested out the controls with mouse and keyboard and uh, an Xbox controller and the Stadia controller, just seeing how well it runs across different devices like my PC and the laptop and I just did not enjoy the experience, and as soon as I realized that this is just not the way to play Destiny 2, that there were enough drawbacks and enough of a noticeable input lag that I prefer much rather play this on, like, PC or consoles, I just kind of backed out and never looked back, and I feel like that's something that happened for a lot of people. And for some people, Destiny 2 on Stadia might have run satisfactorily, but when they saw that there was just a general lack of a strong player base, when they saw how long it takes for just matchmaking for certain activities, when they saw that the population of Destiny 2 on Stadia was untenable, they might have seen that and went, well, why would I play it here when we've got a solid player base, a thriving population on other platforms, and so they might have left as a result of that. And then one last potential reason that Forbes highlight for why Destiny 2 on Stadia's population has dwindled so much is that Stadia as a platform just isn't all that popular. It isn't something that garnered a lot of positive attention. It's just not a product that people desire with its current business model, and 
That's a huge part of it, indeed. A game on a specific platform just cannot have a thriving population if the platform itself cannot draw in a thriving population. And the fact of the matter is that Stadia lost a whole lot of momentum due to its half-assed release, with missing features, missing games, limited functionalities when it comes to screen switching between PC, mobile, and tablets, and all these different things. And what really killed Stadia, I think, is the business model of not only requiring people to pay 100 $30 for a Founders Edition, but also charging monthly for basic features like 4K 60 FPS, which by the way, not all games deliver on, and also making people pay for individual games rather than doing the subscription model akin to Netflix where you pay a reasonable fee every month and gain access to a whole library. And the numbers speak for themselves. You look at how the Stadia app is performing, which is required to activate Stadia and gain access to the platform, and you'll realize that this number down here, the number of of installs has not changed one iota since launch. The initial analysis that was provided in terms of total number of downloads for the Stadia app was sitting at 175,000 during the launch period. We are now over a month into Stadia's launch and this number hasn't changed, suggesting that Stadia sales have not surpassed the 200,000 mark. It is probably still hovering at between 175,000 and 200,000 with this number going up in 100,000 increments. The fact of the matter is that Stadia is only appealing to a very niche crowd, people who are into tech and find the streaming tech to be really cool, but when it comes to hardcore gamers, a lot of them stay away from Stadia. And then for casual crowds, there are just not a lot of casual games on Stadia. It's all hardcore games intended for hardcore gamers who can already afford things like consoles and a powerful PC. And so long as that continues to be the case, the player base of Stadia will dwindle, and as a result, the games within Stadia won't be able to thrive, especially the multiplayer live service titles that rely on things like matchmaking and a strong population. And that's going to give people even less reason to invest in Stadia, because now they suddenly have the knowledge and the notion that live services and these big multiplayer shared world type of games are doomed to fail on Stadia. They're just doomed to have a less ideal experience because of a lackluster player base, a small player population. So this is all around just a bad look for a platform that has seen nothing but rough patches since launch. And this whole situation is made worse by the fact that Destiny 2 is one of those free games that are offered if you have pro subscription for Stadia, and right now all you can get is the pro subscription through the $130 Founders Edition, so anyone who bought Stadia early will have access to Destiny 2 for free, and even then we're seeing the player base dwindle, people losing interest in the Stadia experience of Destiny 2. Stadia cannot rely on older titles to keep the platform afloat. They have to introduce brand new experiences that are compelling, you know, first party titles that people won't be able to resist and increase Stadia's player base as a whole, the platform player base as a whole, so that other games like Destiny 2 may thrive. But until that happens, it's just going to be a wasteland across the board for online games. And that's particularly bad for a platform like Stadia, which prides itself on some of the connectivity features that they eventually plan to introduce down the line, which were not available at launch. None of those features will matter if you don't have the population to take advantage of them. Destiny 2 highlights that on a game level, but this is also something that will happen on a platform level at this current stage. So yeah, this is sort of where we're at right now with Google Stadia. I cannot say that I feel particularly optimistic about Stadia's future. I certainly didn't feel confident when it first launched, and as more time passes, this whole picture becomes grimmer and grimmer. Only time will tell if Google will make drastic changes to Stadia's business model in an attempt to revert the damage that's been done here. But until then, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the current state of Destiny 2 on Stadia and the state of Stadia as a whole. With that, I would like to end this news update and discussion video. Thank you for tuning in. To be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.